So uh, can you guys see my screen? I guess so, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will also right. turn off camera and I will be listening. Up, up okay, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So, um, I mean, I already did the, um, the presentation. Um, I can show you around a little bit, but if you have any questions or anything, um, give me a shout. So basically, um, uh, let me show you this. Um, on the, from the technical point of view, um, we're basically building this. This is the extension. Um, and uh, I think the link is somewhere, but if you Google it, you can probably find it. Um, and it requires two more extensions. Um, and this is the both the two building blocks I showed in the original slides. There's a, a module called extended contact matcher. And the, the purpose of the extended contact matcher is uh, basically um, you throw any amount of contact data at it and it would figure out whether the contact already exists um, or whether it has to be newly created if it exists, whether to maybe there's a new phone number in there that you want to add to the phone number. So it's a really handy module. And we sort of based um, the form processing a little bit on that. So th these two modules, you're going to have to install it yes, um, as well. Oh, basically, this one is, is mandatory. And you need a geocoder. Um, and since we're not uh, big fans of Google, we, we uh, create this OpenStreetMap geocoder. But it could be any, any kind of geocoder. But as you, um, it's pretty obvious that if you want to match people um, that live close to each other, that you need to be able to geocode their, their addresses, okay, uh, right? So, so sorry, the yeah, extend contact matcher. What's what's the meaning of of that extension? What's so the, the idea is um, mm -hmm. that well, let me show you the, the maybe the configuration screen. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, don't worry. Um, so you can have various profiles, and sort of the mutual aid um, extension creates a new profile on contact matching. And, and the idea is really, um, there's a, it basically it's an API call. It provides mm -hmm. an API call. You can sort of post any kind of contact related data um, into this thing, right? And then it would figure out, it, does the contact already exist in your database? Okay. If it does, do you want to sort of add information to it? Um, if it doesn't exist, um, it's going to be created. So it's basically for from a, a service um, point of view as the, the uh, mutual aid extension. We don't want to bother about how people want to set up the, 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 this matching and stuff. All I know is I've got a form. I've got to post the whole form through this thing and it, it comes back to me with a with a contact ID basically. Okay. Okay. Right? Um, and it's got a lot of setup for uh, configuration options. Um, in this case, for example, if it finds multiple ones, uh, always use the oldest one, but you could also do other stuff here. And then you can say, well, some of the information coming in, it should be used to override um, mm -hmm. stuff. It's, in this particular case, it's going to override a lot of the uh, mutual aid um, information. Um, then it's going to fill fields. That means if somebody, I don't know, um, if the contact is, is identified, but I don't know, the, fir the first name was missing, it's going to fill the first name, stuff like that. OK. And then here you have a set of rules that you can say, um, how, how can you identify whether a contact is already in the system? And like the, it's just going to go through these rules one by one. If, it, if I can find a contact with the same last name, the same first name, and the same email address, um, it's going to consider that a match, yeah, the same with phone and address. Um, and then it sort of goes down to less, um, I would say, less uh, reliable uh, setups like these. Um, but the idea was also not to hard code this, but to allow anyone to sort of adjust this um, matching process to their needs. That's why the, the extension is quite handy. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. Um, So where were we here? So that's that's the one extension that we that we depend on, and um, as I said, the geocoder obviously as well. Um, and then if you install it, 
Um, it sort of comes with its own little the um, mutual aid extension. It comes with its own little menu. And actually, Nick, um, our wonderful host, has also um, created a neat little dashboard. That's very, this is this one on the right hand side. It sort of reflects the menu, but it's kind of nicely grouped. Um, and it's a good sort of starting point for you. So here's some configuration options. So you'd have to do um, the, you'd have to set the, at least the geocoding provider, right? Other one, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, then we get to the general configuration in a minute. Um, as I said, there's an, an option group for the, There we go, help us. So there's an option group that you can sort of basically set, um, create any sort of um, um, help types that, to be used in the extension. Um, it is a good idea to, to define or sort of think about those up front if you want to start using the extension, because if you start changing the help types later, Fine, so I think about those up front. If you're a bit, a bit messy with the matching, right? Because if you already, let's say, you already match people for shopping, but then you decide that you disable shopping and you want to sort of do more detailed shopping for groceries and shopping for clothes or something like that, right? Uh, but nevertheless, it can, you can change that at any point, just it might have a bit of a fallout on um, the matching results. Um, okay, what else is on the, on the little dashboard? Um, obviously, it gives you, um, you can create um, email templates. This is basically just a, a link to the CVCM's uh, template list. Uh, then the next step would be gather. So in this case, uh, you could import contacts or whatever if you're sort of starting with a fresh system. Um, and then these are the links to the two forms. Uh, there's the offer help and the request help form. These are by design, uh, don't require any permissions. And the um, sort of risk for the system of having this form without permissions is, is very low because as we're using the contact matcher, you have to know quite a lot about a contact in order to sort of, if you want to hijack the contact, let's say you need quite a lot of information in order to do that. Um, you can also, so basically, what this form does is collecting data and then putting it through an API. So for example, if you want to have um, a separate, maybe nicer form uh, in uh, with like a proper theme and stuff like that, you can also use another form and just have it submit the, uh, the form contents to the API to, to, the, to the, basically to the core of the system. Um, it doesn't make a difference where the data is coming from. Uh, it, just, it just expects the kind of data to come in at some point. Um, and we're shipping it with these forms just to make it easy for people. Um, yeah, that's it. So maybe there's a couple of, oh, there we go. Um, the connect bit, um, this is about um, sort of matching uh, requests and uh, have, the, uh, have a list of the requests that are, that are unconfirmed. As I said in the presentation uh, half an hour ago, is basically what the system does, it does propose matches, right? So it's trying to come up with, of all the unassigned uh, help requests and all the unassigned uh, help offers, it's going to try to find the, the best, uh, the best uh, matchup under the current conditions. Uh, that's the, and the, uh, you have to know quite a lot about the context. You can also so um, a separate maybe nice with the uh, the form comes to the it just it just expects okay yeah that's it so maybe um, sort of matching said in the presentation uh, come up with of all the understanding the, the best you just um, it's the same as here you just say match now and it's going to run the matcher yeah they, I I already put one pair in so to so I can show it to you um, but I haven't confirmed it yet so obviously it gets matched to each other but obviously the more uh, context you have or the more requests you have in here. Um, the more complicated it gets, right? And this is where the um, where the the, the uh, weighted matching comes in. 
Um, let me show you the configuration screen for the extension. This is a bit bulky because it also contains the, um, oh yeah, this is a feature um, that we didn't end up using in the end because just as well as you can say, I want to uh, request a certain type of help or, or, or offer it. You can also say, I speak a certain, like these two, three languages that I speak and that I could potentially help people with. Um, it wasn't that important in the scenario we deployed it, but I could see uh, in a more, let's say, multicultural environment, it would probably be good to respect uh, languages spoken as well. However, I'm not quite sure if the, the matcher, I think, respects that, but I, as you can imagine, it hasn't been tested very well. It hasn't been tested in the field, let's say. Um, then uh, most of this is about the forms, whether you can um, add uh, comments, uh, your distance unit, uh, you can have some terms and conditions so that people before they send you your data know what they're, what they're up, uh, what they're into. Um, there's a, a default team, um, email confirmation template that gets sent out when you confirm a, um, uh, a suggested match. Uh, we'll have a look at what that means uh, in a minute. And there's um, this, these bits um, actually control the behavior of the matcher because what the matcher does is trying to um, come up with all um, potential matches and then weigh them, right? They're gonna be rated after, according to these weights. And um, we haven't had a lot of time for testing, so we don't have a good idea of what good weight should be here. So it's all one, but um, if you see, for example, or oh, maybe let me just walk you through it. So obviously um, t watching by hub type should be, should be right up there. That means if somebody, you know, asks for shopping and you offer walking the dog, then maybe you shouldn't be matched. That's what this means. But on the other side, um, there might be gray zones as in uh, you offer walking the dog and shopping. Um, and then maybe you might, you're a, the other guy only or, uh, offers walking the dog. So maybe he's a better uh, fit. So this is where, where these weights come in. Um, same with the distance. Um, that means, um, well, basically based on the distance, uh, whether, uh, we don't want to, we ideally for the helpers, we want to keep the, the distance as short as possible. Uh, but there's also a counter weight here saying, uh, if somebody lives in the center, we don't want them to get everybody else from the center because maybe, um, maybe it's, it's overloading him or her. Um, and there's another way that's coming in here as well is the workload is basically how many, uh, as a helper, how many people do I already help? So the higher that workload basically is, um, the lower your chances are to uh, be assigned to yet another person. Uh, are you guys still following? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're here. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it's, it is so weird that you, can, that you can't see the faces of people. Yeah. So okay. basically, the concept is uh, you have two groups of people, one that has needs and one that doesn't have need. The, the one that has needs and then one that can provide to fulfill their needs. Exactly. Yeah. And you're matching them on a different levels, what they want or what they need. So that's what the um, yes. extensions do. Yeah. Exactly. And it's pretty straightforward if you just have 10 people, but if you have a thousand people and you want to do a good job of matching like 500 volunteers to 500 people yeah. who are in need of help and don't want to send them all over town, um, then, then you, you need to automate it in some way, right? Yeah, but you have to, you have to categorize needs very well. Exactly. And yeah. Well, you could. Uh, some people, uh, I, I know from one organization that just has a, one generic help type, say any type of help, and they're just connecting people, right? So basically that, that means they're kind of disabling uh, the help type altogether. But um, obviously if you, yeah, maybe you wanna, it, it really depends on your setup and, and what people need in your area. 
Yeah, like everything in CVCRM, it depends on you. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. I have a yeah, question. Sure. So I see, I, I, I get the concept that it's matching a need and, an, and a service, quote unquote. Um, is there a way of, like, if I am working in the back end and I want to see how many people are matched and, and people that need to be matched, is there a way to visually see, yes. for instance, like a report or something that I could know yes, that, okay, out of the 10 requests, five have been approved, five are still pending or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Let, let, me, let me just, um, maybe we'll do a, a quick excursion of what it actually looks like in the system. Um, so these are my contacts and I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think these two have been matched, I guess. So what it does is it creates uh, two custom field sets. Uh, okay. One where you basically say, I offer help of these types. This is the only one uh, activated right now. And for a maximum amount of five people and within 100 meters of my location. Um, you could potentially at the same time also be somebody needing help. Um, could be, we didn't want to rule it out, right? So we didn't do contact types or anything. You basically just, if this is set for you, then you would consider to be in need of help. And then what the matcher does is it, it creates a relationship here. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. And uh, the status assigned. Assigned means that the, the algorithm has, you could also call it proposed or something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. And it also um, contains the kind of help type um, that has been matched. And then on that, there's a lot of, so we have reports for uh, unconfirmed matches which then basically goes and says, this, these are the matches that are currently unfulfilled, which is just this one, because it has only okay, been assigned and not approved yet, right? Um, and we also have a report for matching issues. So sometimes people just don't get matched and it could be, for example, in this case, because it hasn't been geocoded, right? Sometimes people enter addresses that just don't geocode because there's a typo or because- the Do you attach, do you properly. attach, a, sorry. Do you attach a date to when the request was put in? So, for instance, if like, can I know that the request that was put in today, as opposed to something that's been there for a week or a month or anything like that? Or I think we've yeah we've looked into that. We uh, did we ended up not doing it, but there might still be a disabled custom field for that. Let me see. <laughs> uh, I think the, the the generic idea was to put it at this help field. So let me see if it's still there. No. But we had at some point we had a custom field uh, with the dates for the timestamp of when um, this was set or changed the last time. But it didn't make it into the extension right now, no. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, but um, I mean, as soon as, so you're right, so you can't, right, right now, um, it's a bit tricky to find out how long help hasn't been matched. Um, as soon as the, um, as soon as the um, relationship has been confirmed, then obviously the relationship has the start date. But oh, that's that true. You're, you're right, that's true. It, doesn't, it doesn't help you finding out um, if somebody hasn't been matched for ages. You're right. So I understand the w sorry if sorry if I'm talking too much just let me no, guys no, no, sorry it's just, it's this is very interesting because I see a, a an implementation of this for what I'm thinking of but I just need mm -hmm. to get more information. So when you said that this shows up as a relationship, correct? Yeah. Um and then before that you show the screen that's on the I think it's on the summary page of a contact um can you have several, several of those? So, for instance, I probably need like multiple needs. From, yeah, there is is there because like the way that this is set up, this is set up as a one, one, one offer and one need. Um, what happens if you no. have several, or that um, would that create multiple? Um, needs? Right now, we only have help type any activated. So let me just go and. Uh, activate more. Uh, so it just adds on to it? 
the, yeah, the idea is that you tell people that you need uh, pipes. And let's just um, enable the specific ones. Oh, okay, got it, got it. So it would show. Um, yeah, exactly. So we'll disable this one and rather go for this one and this one. And then when we go back to my contact, you can you can pick any number of those, right? Uh, I don't know why inline edit doesn't work, but oh, did I just delete myself? I can't remember doing that. Uh, yeah, not not you you. Oh. Okay, here we go. So you you could say okay, these are the kinds oh, of help that I need, right? What is true is that you can't do something like I need shopping at seven in the morning on Wednesday or something. It's just this is because this is supposed to be not a one-off but like a permanent relationship, if you know what I mean, right? It's like idea is that you get somebody assigned to do the shopping for you for the for the duration of the lockdown or whatever it is. Ah. Right. It's not. It's not a. What is it? If, I mean, it could probably be bent into something else, but the original idea was just to um, connect people based on on their needs and not like schedule individual shopping runs. Yeah, but I I love the concept though. But it's yeah, I I see what it's meant to do, and it's mm. it would be hard to kind of tweak that to something else. It's not. Um, I have an alarm going off somewhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, um, there's another thing. I think this should now also um, come up with the matching issues, uh -huh. because now you have somebody with this with help types that are dis dis um, disabled. Mm -hmm. So the the um, the idea of this this matching issue report is to just sort of catch the most common reasons why people can't get matched besides obviously they're not being enough helpers around. Is this mainly meant for individuals or was it used as an organization individual mix? The, I think the matching only works on individuals Okay. because an organization can't go out, right? Uh, it would be then some member of the organization, you know, like an employee, if you want to use it for a, for that kind of thing. So, for example, you could say, I, I would, we would only, um, we could already um, sort of import all our employees as individuals with mm -hmm. the respective offers uh, and where they live. And um, if they live at where your company is, then that's it. And, um, and then only sort of um, publish the um, the request help form and then use that to assign people to to help them. But again, it's more about it would need some some adjustments, I think, if you want to do it for like one time jobs rather than a, um, a, like a, a long standing relationship of helping these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry. Uh. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. Stop saying uh, sorry. Yeah. I was like, I, I was thinking about what about the people that are not that uh, tech savvy because basically yeah. you have you have. Uh, I, I was just I'm I'm thinking aloud. Sorry, it's not like yeah, no. I, I was like, okay. So basically, you have a group of people that need help and they are old and they are can't see and. They they are not tech savvy, so basically the the organi organizing that input or import would be like that. We we from organi we from our organization give the input in the system, sure. and the people that are like uh, want to help also can do input on their own, and then we can do the matching. I'm I'm just thinking aloud. Yeah. It's not like yeah, yeah. something that is. Because that that's that's kind of obstacle during the, the this COVID lockdown in in Serbia, you had a lot of people that are like um, they're that are 
old and they mm. people 65 plus couldn't go out from the homes i'm, I'm just talking about yeah no this. i know we had the same issue here you, you, yeah probably and they couldn't go out for, uh, out of their home for groceries or something and they had some silly stuff like they could go out in three in the morning and that we had stores that were working in 3 a.m to 5 a.m but really that's oh we didn't have that so yeah I'm sorry for digression, and and we had that kind of people, but we had a lot of volunteer groups that yeah. were like going and helping people. So I, I was just putting in this in the scenario where how can this, which is it, which is very nice extension, could help to match people, you know. Well, I mean to start with you need some way of communication in terms of older people. It's probably like a landline phone or something, right? Yeah. yeah but yeah, nothing yeah. really stops you from entering somebody else in this form with their landline phone if you, if you, if you want. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, I, I, I think that you said in the, in the, in the introduction main hall that it's basically automatic, but a little bit of help. It's like some, I would up. be I would be very careful with automatic, right? Because you need yeah, these no. forms to be public, uh, and basically anyone can sign anyone up. So yeah. what the organizations that I know about, they use it mostly for the for the for the matching. So to make sure that they don't send people all over town uh, for no reason. Understood. So mm -hmm. what they did is they they run the matching, then they get a number, like let's say two hundred matches and then they sit down and, and call them up on the phone and if they have the impression unless you know they're already in the system and they, they know that they're or they're trustworthy or something they have some kind of filter system there but the ones that are really new yeah um they uh they're going to call them and see what's up and then if they're happy with that and the same for people who request help um yeah. and then uh, and then once they're matched up, then they either do a phone call, like a joint phone call, mm -hmm. um, or some kind of communication there. Yeah, but yeah. It, it, it still is manual work because you, unless you have, you do have a database where at least you can trust all the volunteers because they're already in your database and you knew them, you're going to have to do some sort of checking in order to, to uh, prevent yeah, yeah, yeah. abusing this one group. or the other way you have to do the checking you have to do but yeah. it's but it's easier to to let the machine do the matching and then our algorithm to do matching and then you yeah. have to check up it's much easier than to okay yeah exactly okay. so the idea was um that and i said i think i mentioned that in the in the introduction in the in the main hall um it's not even, I mean, you're not done when you've connected those people, right? Because yeah. you need to be able to be available to them if they want to complain or if it doesn't work or, or also just to tell them, you know, we're done because other, if somebody says I can take five people and help them, if they don't tell you that they're done helping somebody, they're not going to be reassigned anymore, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's still, it's still, it's still going to be some manual work and I'm not sure there's any way of getting rid of that. But the, the problem with the matching grows exponentially, right? If you have 10 people with, uh, like I say, 10 uh, requests and 10 uh, people providing, it's, it's pretty easy. But even like when you go up to 30, 40, it becomes really tedious to figure out what's the best, yes. what's the best match up here. And, yeah. and that's, so the, the idea of the extension was to provide this algorithm to, to be sure that you can do a good job at like, matching these people. Um, and to provide the um, the infrastructure, as in like the fields and the reports and everything you need uh, to to sort of uh, do the manual tasks that are still still going to have to be there. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It was it was it is it is very refreshing thing, <laughs> and it deals um, with the sensitive stuff, really sensitive stuff. So. Yeah. No, and, and you have to be always aware that um, yeah. that these are people that you in your name sending to somebody else's home. Of course, right. So you have to be <laughs> yeah, you have to be sure that it's that it's. Um, and I know right around my neighborhood, I'm sure 99% of people 
a very a very um, you know wholehearted and just want to help. But there's always like the odd idiot that sort of ruins for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> always you have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why we have to be aware more and, and to yeah, be exactly. very careful. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know, do you, do you want me to? Uh, we, I think we were going through the um, settings. Maybe we can just, or did, did you want to, if anyone wants to see something else, let me know. Um, so as I said, I think the settings, like um, these weights are to sort of, control what the metro does. So if you have a, a, a feeling that it's not really balanced well, you can just sort of play with the weights. And as I said, what the metro does is it just takes all the possible, all the possible options because uh, the options are limited um, by a maximum distance. So not all matches will work all the time. So, um, uh, so it's just looking at um, sort of a, a limited set of possible connections. And all of those are then going to be rated uh, based on, uh, on the stuff you see here. Um, and the rest of the form, even though it looks complicated, is basically just saying, um, just a way of, of customizing the, the request form, right? Do you want to uh, ask for the prefix or not? If uh, if you don't, should there be a default value? And it's pretty much the same for all of the fields. Um, that's why it looks kind of messy, but it's basically just saying uh, these these are all the fields uh, that there are in the in the forms, and what values should they have, and should they even be there or not? Um, and there's some default values. For example, um, if you don't want to bother help us to tell you how many help uh, how many people they want to be helping, then you just turn it off and set it to one, and then um, everybody's just matched to one other person, for example. Right. Is, is the same way with yeah. distance. Hmm? Can you, okay, is it integrated in the web form, Drupal web form, or you have to use it like CVCRM? Uh, um, so what we did, I think that the, one of the people that were using it was they're using web forms. Mm -hmm. And there is um, an extension to submit web forms to a CDCRM API. Mm -hmm. And it basically just says like when you submit the web form, all it does is like takes all the, the values from the web form and uh, pushes it into a CVCRM API. And if you set up the web form in the right way um, and install that extension to submit it to Civi, then it's just going to end up in the system in the same way as, as these built-in forms do. Okay. It okay. also has the advantage that um, you don't have to be on the same machine, right? For example, you can have your Civi somewhere else, and then you have a public website uh, with a bunch of nice forms on it, and it could just transfer the... Um, the submission all the way over to the other machine with CVCRM on it. Nice. Um, yeah. Any more questions? I'm wondering if there's anything else to look at. Maybe let me have a look at Nick's dashboard again. It's always handy <laughs> to get an overview. Uh, it's pretty much it. Pretty much it, I guess. Uh, one, one question. Hello. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I wonder how easy to um, match on other criteria than uh, the local, uh, localization. Can we match without geographic aspect just on? Um, yes. So um, right now it would always, so if somebody isn't geocoded, it would flag it as an issue. So that, that wouldn't work, but we could probably take this out. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too much of an issue to take it out. And then basically what you can do is just um, set the, the weight of uh, matching by location to zero, and then it's not going to be considered anymore. I see. Or what, what you could also do is basically just set every, like geocode everyone in your database with the same coordinates or something to go around it. But it's, 
it might be a good idea to um, add like an option or something saying uh, we don't want geocoding, we don't want that. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Really. Uh, I saw also that uh, the criteria be, uh, comes from option of a relation. Is it the key for matching? Is it the what? Key? The option. Yeah. The relation. Uh, the, is this the key for matching? Um, so, uh, yes. Um, so, you, you're talking about these, right? These options? Yes. Yes. Um, so, obviously, um, you have to have, uh, in order to match, you have to have at least one of the same kind, right? Let's say you offer shopping, the other one wants shopping, then this is a possible match. The question is, what happens if there's an overlap, right? Let's say somebody um, wants all three, like shopping, walk the dog and pick up the parcels. And one, somebody offers only shopping and another person offers shopping, walking the dog. So that one would be preferred over the one that, that only offers one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a, a measure of how good the match is, is that the overlap of matching, basically, of matching um, types. So to add other option, other criteria, it cannot be done easily on the fly. Yeah, yeah, you just click add another option, say la 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 la, la and that's it. This is, an, this is a, um, a CV option value. You can create as many as you want. However, um, I think it might be get, get a bit messy if you, you know, create a million <laughs> options there. But yeah, sure, you can create any, any amount you want. As I said before, it's a good idea to have these options down before you start using it because it gets messy if you already assign people to, uh, to do stuff that later you're going to take out um, you know what I mean? Yes. So it's a good idea to, maybe you can add stuff, but like taking stuff away that's already in use, it's obviously not, not a very good idea. Another question on the same uh, direction is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, can we use tags uh, for criteria, for matching? Um, tags for matching. Um, Give an example of this. I'm not quite sure I know what you mean. To, to have uh, more, more details, you know, um, let's say um, shopping in, uh, to have be shopping to extend shopping to a local shop would be a tag or uh, to larger shop supermarket mm -hmm. to extend with I mean I I don't think you can do that with tags because what what's going to be created is the relationship and you can't really tag the relationship that well so mm -hmm. what I would do is I would just create different ways of shopping I mean there's no reason you can't have uh, shopping uh, large and shopping corner shop or something voilà. okay so that should work I, i'm I, it's not exactly the same right because now it's going to be difficult for somebody to say i want maybe both of them although they can just you well they could just take both of them i guess i understand okay well thank um, you yeah, cool. Yes, that's right, cool. Um, maybe there's something that needs some explanation as well, because the um, the relationship created has uh, three built-in statuses, right? A sign says that the matcher has sort of proposed proposing that. We could also rename that to a proposed or something. That's maybe better. Oh, come on. Um, and then we have confirmed communicated so that um, it makes sense to have a step in between sometimes people confirm it but then there's another step of actually um, sort of connecting them 
and that's what meant by communicated and cancelled or it could also be like ended uh, it's another one but so these three uh, these four you should basically leave alone because they're important for the mod for the matcher at least uh, proposed is um, this one is is uh, basically means that the matcher can sort of reassign them whenever they want right let's say you have a match but you run the matcher a day later and there's a lot better combination so it's going to uh, basically rewire or sort of redo the matching in in a more efficient way um, so as long as it's in this status um, and it has to be this one then the matcher knows okay this this is something that i can still change and then um, for the cancelled one means, okay, if the help request is still there and there is a relationship but it's been cancelled, then this person is still in need, right, and needs to be reassigned. So that means that um, if there's a relationship, obviously if there's no relationship, then this is just going to go ahead and try and match it. But if there's a relationship and it's in status one or four, it means it can sort of redo it, mm. right? But you can create any other amount of statuses in between for yourself to be able to keep track of what's going on here. Uh, maybe you have an extra status called ask for feedback like a week later or something like that. And then you can have like a sort of kind of a report saying, give me all of the relationships that have started in the last week and are in status um, uh, feedback. And then you know you have a list of people you have to call and ask for their feedback or something like that. Yeah. It's a great use of the relationship. I think so, yeah. And it, I mean, that's that's the whole idea. It's supposed to be a relationship, right? And I, um, I mean, I haven't personally call, uh, sort of talked to the people that were actually sort of um, sort of in those systems because that was another organization. But I've heard that there's like it's it's a really human experience, right, to help somebody else. And, and that um, I've heard stories of where they, you know, are still hanging out even though now the lockdown is lifted and it's, it's mm. kind of nice. Mm. 